Catch all these great games plus the five BCS games live in January only on NASN. Check NASN.com for schedules and information. Reminder, tune in NBA Wednesday. The Chicago Bulls try to shake off a slow start to this season and go to San Antonio to take on Tim Duncan and the Spurs. Spurs defending NBA champion and looking very solid again this season with the best record in the Western Conference. Check the time in your air of the world for NBA Wednesday later on this week right here on ESPN. station around the globe this was the holiday season and our thanks to all of them many of whom we hope have tuned in tonight to just enjoy a little bit of football and a very important game in Minneapolis Minnesota a win and they're in Washington a win and then a win next week and they would be in as Portis Takes it out to the 12 yard line. He stopped there by Pat Williams, a gain of three, second down and seven. Yeah, you know, I mean, Pat Williams not only plays that nose tackle, and you say you, you can't run inside, but he goes right down the line. <laughs> and you get, you know, it's not only you can't run up the middle against him, you can't run anywhere in between the tight ends and do anything. Pat and Kevin Williams both. Going to Honolulu in February. Second down and seven from the 12 yard line, and the up back takes it. This will be Mike Sellers, but maybe a yard. Third down and six. You know, on that play that we showed Pat Williams making the tackle, the, the Washington Redskins had three offensive tackles in there, and Lorenzo Alexander was the third tackle, so he was kind of playing tight end. So they went center on the right side, it went center, guard. Right tackle, extra right tackle. And it still didn't get him anything in that first down run. Liddell Betts comes in on third down in the backfield. Offset third and six from the 13 yard line. And the ball is loose. Casey Robach is the, the center, and Washington is able to recover. So as Collins accepts the snap. He drops it and Washington will punt from deep in their own territory. What do you think old Casey Robach has in, in his mind. It's been Pat Williams all night now here it's nickel and he doesn't have anyone over him and it looks like he, he just didn't get the ball up to Todd Collins. See Collins. Oh no no Todd he did get the ball up. Todd Collins wasn't ready for it. Frost the punt. Long drive under one kick field at 50 yard line by Noel De Moore. And Moore with a good run back. 17 yard return to the 33, and a flag comes in. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 92 of the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Jamie Mitchell, and right now let's take a look at the Redskin defense. Philip Daniels, Donaldsonville, Georgia. Cornelius Griffin, Alabama. Anthony Montgomery, Minnesota. Andre Carter, California. Marcus Washington, Auburn. London Fletcher, John Carroll University. Randall Godfrey, University of Georgia. Sean Springs, D. Ohio State University. Leron Landry, LSU. Reed Dowdy, Northern Colorado. Fred Smoot, Mississippi State University. And we already saw Smoot. Intercept a pass tonight. The ball is at the 48 after the penalty. And Jackson's pass is right on the money to Robert Ferguson, the ex Packer, and that is close to a first down. You know, the Vikings have good field position here, and that's a, that's a smart first down play because we know what the Redskins are doing. I mean, they're packing the line of scrimmage, eight men up, and the way you get them out of that is you have to throw them out of that. So the time to throw them is on first down, second down, on running downs, throw the ball because it's going to get him out of that packed box of eight men. Plus, it's a lot easier throwing. From the 37 after a game of 11 yards. And we give the ball now to Taylor, and he takes it to the 35. 
It'll be second and long. See, the Redskins have a lot of different defensive packages. And we see here they have a 4-4. They have one, two, three, four defensive linemen and four linebackers. So you talk about, you know, packing the box and then even more than that, having the extra linebacker taking a defensive back out and putting in a linebacker. Greg Williams says he has 10 different defensive packages for this game. Now Taylor busts his way down to the 31 yard line. He's stopped there by H.B. Blades, the rookie out of Pittsburgh. We'll see a lot of action now with Rocky McIntosh having gotten injured last week in the game against the Giants and is done for the season. There is H.B. Blades, father Benny Blades, uncle Al Blades died in a car accident at the age of 26, was probably the most instrumental guy in his life. Brian Blades also played in the NFL. We have a flag here for a false start on a third down and three. False start. Number 64 offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Anthony Herrera. Right. It's so important for Brad Childress to get in third and manageable situations that he calls them like third and three or four. He had that, so now he can still run the ball if he wants to, or he can run the draw, he can you know, you know play action pass and do those things. Then he gets a penalty, and now he's in this situation, a situation that he doesn't want his quarterback in. Third and eight, we saw Peterson on the sideline, Taylor in on third down, and then on this series as Jackson backs up, fires over the middle, and the pass is not caught at the 21 yard line. Troy Williamson went down to try to get it before it hit the turf. But couldn't, and it will be fourth down. Yeah, what the Redskins did on that one is they went their their nickel package, and they came on a blitz, and they just they just forced Tavares Jackson. He didn't step into that one, and you know his mechanics really aren't NFL mechanics yet, and you know he, he can't handle that stuff, and you know and that's the penalty. I mean, they go from third and three or four, and they get in third and long, and they bring the blitz, and they have nickel, and they cause this type of thing to happen. Long wall for a 53-yard attempt. And the kick is no good. Wide to the left. So Ryan Longwell having a great year. Played several years with the Green Bay Packers and then came over to Minnesota a couple of seasons ago. Misses one. And Washington will take over at the 43 yard line. Kind of funny the way it all worked out at the end of the year, especially for us on Sunday night. You get this game which turns out to be a huge game next week you've got Tennessee with their chance to get in so we're down to one playoff spot in, in each conference and it's very exciting at this point obviously uh, this this is a part of football I love you know because everyone you know wants to be in the playoffs you want to win the Super Bowl you want to get yourself in position to play these games and then of course you hope you play well when you get here and here's Portis and he'll pick up a first down and one of the great things too John is, is that you know, you never know. There's always somebody at the end. You'll go, well, wait a minute. How did Tennessee get there? How did Washington get there? How did Minnesota, How did Minnesota get, get, Minnesota there? get right. there? Yeah, I mean, New Orleans won, is still not dead either. Right. They won five straight, and you know they're kind of stumbling around here early. But I mean, the way they got there is they have dominant defensive line. They have a dominant offensive line. They can run the ball. Although the Redskins haven't let them get started yet tonight. No, the Redskins right now have controlled the ball for almost the entire quarter, which has come to an end. That's the end of the first quarter at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Washington leading Minnesota nine to nothing. And Sunday Night Football will resume after these messages. Hey, Mike, you got my shirt on again, man. No, not this one, Chris. I've had it forever. Gift from my grandma. Your grandma? Yeah, Cora. Grandma Cora. It's got my number on it, man. You know what, Chris? I'm not gonna sit here and have you disrespect Grandma Cora. Mike. ESPN, your NBA destination for games Wednesdays and Fridays, plus in-depth analysis all week. Fantastic dunks. Shots. Primetime players. Rivalry. And buzzer beaters. Got it! And Louisville tops Marquette! This is what college basketball is all about. Follow the
drama and the excitement on the hardwood all season long. Ah! Only on ESPN. Fighting Illini battled the USC Trojans in the 2008 Rose Bowl. Live Tuesday, January 1st, only on ESPN. Come on, Bradshaw! The rookie may have run the Giants into the postseason. The Cleveland Browns may not be doing any kind of clinching at Paul Brown Stadium. Brady fires Moss, touchdown! Brady and Moss have hooked up twice. Brady with those 48. And a chance to tie and set the record when the Pats go for their unbeaten season against the Giants on Saturday night. Short field now, 43 yard line, Washington after the missed field goal attempt. And this will be Clinton Portis who gets tackled by E.J. Henderson at the 35 yard line. You know, and that's what Joe Gibbs was talking about last night. I mean, you know that Joe Gibbs comes in here and he isn't going to say that I can't run. He's going to say it's going to be tough early in the middle. I think he thinks he can get out there later, but I'm going to run the edges. And that's what he just did on that last play to Clinton Portis. And now he goes no huddle on second and two. And this is Portis, and he's going to be stopped a yard shy of the first down. You got Pat Williams right in the middle of the action right there, setting up a third down and one. You know, every every coach that's an old offensive line coach like Joe Gibbs was and an offensive coordinator. They always think that they can wear down defenses. And his key word was it's going to be tough against them early. And I think that, you know, after he gets, you know, a few possessions, after he gets a, fir a few first downs, after they get into that end of the third and fourth quarter, it may be a little easier. Third and one, and Collins is going to sneak his way to a first down over Pete Kendall. The Washington Redskins as a unit resilient, and that would be the word to describe. Todd Collins who played at Michigan in fact he succeeded Elvis Gerbach and he was there before Brian Greasy gets drafted by Buffalo he was the anointed successor to Jim Kelly and then he wound up starting after Kelly retired Marv Levy's last year Wade Phillips came in they released him he winds up going to Kansas City and almost never plays there because Trent Green never gets hurt. When he goes to Washington and he gets in because Jason Campbell got hurt in the Chicago game. And there is E.J. Henderson who just envelops him to the sack. You know, I knew they were going to do that. It was first down. They have good field position. They were going to try and take the shot, get the ball up the field. I think the Viking defense was thinking the same thing. It's first and ten. We're not going to play run. We're going to play pass. We're going to blitz. Todd Collins is looking for the deep one. He's looking for Chris Cooley in the middle. And boom, here comes E.J. Henderson. Fifth year out of Maryland. Second draft choice in 03. Six yard sack. Second down and 16. The Vikings so strong up the middle. There's two tackles. Henderson and then Schrocker the safety. Collins sets up the screen. Ford starts to slip and regains his balance. And then he gets the ball back down to the 32 yard line. Still, it will be third and long. In almost every sport, you're just thinking about that middle. In baseball, it's the catcher, the second baseman, the shortstop, and the center fielder. In football, it's the two tackles. You've got two guys going to the Pro Bowl. You've got E.J. Henderson, who leads the team in tackles, and you saw him on that sack. And then the veteran, Sharper, who has more interceptions than any current player. And uh, Leslie Frazier is a defensive coordinator. Of this group, and I like what he did on that first down because I had the same feeling that he did. Is they have this good field position, they're going to take a shot there in first down, so he uses a pass defense. Third and ten, they run a draw, but that won't go anywhere because it's too tough to get by Mitchell, number 92, who makes the stop on the play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's the thing. You get him in third and long, you put your nickel defense in, and and those guys have to check that draw on their way to the quarterback. You get them in there, it's a pass rush situation, but you always have to check the draw. Now, Sweezum, we saw him in the wind at the Meadowlands last week kick a 50 yarder. This time, perfect conditions, 51 yard attempt. 
and then Frost juggles it. He can't even get the kick away, and Frost gets buried at the 42-yard line. In effect, the end result will be the same thing as a missed field goal. That's about where Minnesota will get the ball. Frost drops it. 9-0 Washington. Spend your holidays with us right here on NASN. The NFL regular season comes to an end with the league's top teams vying for playoff berths. Pass into the end zone. For the touchdown. We've got 15 bowl games leading to every BCS game live in January. Touchdown, Ohio State. And ring in the new year with a special live NHL doubleheader. Scores. The holidays have never looked brighter on NASN. Is this the year the cup comes to Buffalo? To Carolina? To Pittsburgh? Is this the year someone scores 50 and 38? In 37? In 36? Is this the year someone scores 200 points? Is this the year kids start taping their sticks like stall? Is this the year someone scores 93? Is this the year a forward becomes unstoppable? Is this the year a goalie stops everything? Is this the year we finally figure out who's dad's favorite? Is this the year? Is this the year? Method go up. Is this the year? Is this the year? <laughs> November 4th here against the Chargers NFL single game record of course he he was hurt at Oklahoma had the collarbone wind up winds up as the seventh overall pick but he has broken in with a flourish and has a good chance to win the rushing tackle especially with Willie Parker uh, for the season and here he goes trying to break a tackle and get to the outside but he can't as he gets secured at the line of scrimmage by Randall Godfrey you know last night we were talking to Greg Williams he says that that Adrian Peterson runs violent and he said that you know you have to tackle him that way so when you tackle Adrian Peterson it's more like you're in a car wreck than it is a tackle and you, you have to be ready to play that way and I kind of get the feeling that the Redskin defense is playing like that tonight against Adrian Peterson. A couple of weeks ago the 49ers bottled him up holding the three yards. Well, the Vikings did win the game and the pass on second down is caught. By Robert Ferguson, who spins it away after picking up the first down in Washington territory at the 45 yard line is a gain of 13. You know, and this is what Tavares Jackson has to do. The, the Redskins ran a 46 defense. They had five defensive linemen, three linebackers in there. Now that means you only have three defensive backs. So you don't have, you have a disadvantage running the ball, but you pick up the advantage in throwing. That's that old Buddy Ryan defense in 46. 85 Bears. About 10 minutes to play in the hand. Jackson to the outside. This one is caught and then fumbled by Shanko, the tight end. And Randall Godfrey forced it and recovered by Washington. Golston is there for the recovery. So it's turned over by the former giant Shanko. On the fumble, Redskins have the ball in a 9-0 advantage. In the National Football League, one thing is certain. Expect the unexpected. Just because you're thousands of miles from the nearest big league stadium doesn't mean you can't be a big league fan. Majestic Athletic, the official uniform supplier for all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. Hockey Fights Cancer has raised more than $9 million for cancer care, research, and awareness. Don't give up. Join our hockey family in the fight against cancer. Log on to NHL.com 
and join the fight. Don't give up. Asante Shanko loses the ball the Redskins have forced nine fumbles this year after receptions that's the ninth right there that's the most in the league and now the Redskins will have it at their own 41 yard line to start this drive. Corbis is the running back the play fake to him. Collins has a lot of time before he gets hit and Cooley is the intended receiver but Sharper is right with him to come in and bang it down second and ten. You know that's the thing we talk about Todd Collins how he's kind of a a rhythm quarterback get the ball out of there quickly and sometimes when the pass protection is so good after this play action pass and he has to hold it for so long his timing is thrown up. and now the defense has more chance to react and that's exactly what Darren Sharpie did on that play. Second down and ten. has to back up gets hit as he throws and the catch is made by Antoine Randall L who had a silent game in New York last week Ben Lieber put the pressure on it'll be a four yard pickup and it'll be third down and six. Yeah, he's had a silent game until tonight he didn't touch the ball last week and I was thinking he's I bet they get him into the game earlier tonight and then they didn't and you stand up here and you wonder when is Randall L going to be part of this offense. Randall L, Santana Moss. They've had a lot of injuries. The guys have been in and out of the lineup. Cooley's their leading receiver, but Randall L could make a heck of a difference. Third down and six from the 45 yard line as Collins gets hit again, and that pass is incomplete. Put the pressure on, and you got Sharper that or Dwight Schmidt that time providing the coverage on Cooley. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, we talk about the, the Redskins and the and the pressure they're quitting putting on the quarterback the Vikings have the same thing they aren't going to let Todd Collins just sit back there and be in rhythm and have his way they are coming after him. and you say why did the ball go like that why did it not get to Cooley because Todd Collins was getting hit Frost dropped the snap on the would be field goal attempt Boons this punt. A fair catch is called for, and then letting it go, and it turns out wisely so, was Moel D. Moore for the touchback. And taking over the 20 yard line now will be the Minnesota Vikings, who need a win to get into the playoffs. Hey there, Horners. Tony Reale here, floating an invitation your way to go round the horn weekdays right here on NASN. Europe's leading channel for North American sports. Feast your eyes on my band, the Merry Journalists. Here you go, Who come to help manipulate, the debate the, the latest Although sports news from around, around the world. So if you're a sports nutter, a novice, or just sleepless and slough, you're sure to enjoy the banter. Don't miss Around the Horn right here on NASN. Horn! Here you go. <laughs> Druid's Glen Golf Resort, voted European Golf Resort of the Year 2005. A golfer's paradise in the Garden of Ireland. Two championship golf courses of contrasting design. The luxurious Marriott Druids Glen Hotel and Country Club, featuring 148 specially appointed guest rooms and a magnificent spa and health centre. Visit our driving range, pro shops, golf academy and get your golfing tips or tuition from our resident PGA teaching professional. Well, look at our star track for running backs, and neither of these star running backs putting up particularly impressive numbers. 
Right now, Portis has eight carries for 20 yards, is far outdoing Peterson's paltry totals of just seven yards. Toasty and pleasant 70 degrees, 12 degrees outside, and play fake by Jackson rolling to his right. And then Jackson will slide to a stop at the 22. When Brad Childress took over as the head coach here, Dante Culpepper was still here, but then they couldn't work out a deal. They dealt him to Miami, and Brad John Johnson was the quarterback here last year, the veteran. And he was the guy on top with Jackson learning and getting a lot of playing time in. And then this year he's been kind of in and out of the lineup, but he worked his way back in. And he has been at the helm for all five wins. And Childress would know about developing quarterbacks because he was in Philadelphia when Donovan McNabb came there in 99. And Jackson hit his, he throws and it is picked off by Sean Springs, who picked off two in the Chicago game two and a half weeks ago. And the crowd comes down on Jackson as you've got the interception and the third turnover and the second pick thrown by Jackson. Yeah, you know, and in, in you talk to Brad Childers and he says that Tavares Jackson is a work in progress and he says he'll be a work in progress next year too and for that reason there I mean he did the same thing against the Bears I mean I know you can't step up but you can't throw a jump pass either I mean sometimes the best thing you can do you have pressure the best thing you can do is take the sack I mean if you can't scramble if you can't escape just take the sack the worst thing you can do is what Tavares Jackson just did there and he did the same thing Monday night against the Chicago Bears and he threw that jump pass because Cornelius Griffin had him wrapped up around his legs so under eight to play now in the half Collins down the right sideline and the pass is incomplete intended for Santana Moore so Jackson will go over the pictures on the bench they got away with it against Chicago the other night they were minus three they turned the ball over four times took it away once but you don't win a lot of games when you're minus three and they're already minus three tonight. Yeah and, and that's the thing that Tavares Jackson is going to have to learn and he should have learned it from last week and that should be the lesson. OK you have the pressure someone has your by you like just take the sack. I mean that's not all that bad. I mean what he did was was much much worse. Springs and Smoot with the picks tonight they also lost the fumble. Collins off the fake. Collins going deep and reaching up and making the catch is Moss for the touchdown. Santana Moss, he's healthy again. 32 yard reception beats Marcus McCauley, the rookie out of Fresno State, for the touchdown. And that was their plan. That was a matchup that they were looking for. Al Saunders said that before the game. We want to get Santana Moss on the rookie Marcus McCauley, and that's exactly what they got here. McCauley played it pretty well. And, you know, I mean, he's right there, and, and he just goes up for the ball, but Santana Moss goes up higher and really takes it off McCauley's helmet. Extra point by Sweezum is good. Only the second touchdown reception of the season for Santana Moss. And the Washington Redskins trying to stay alive, controlling their own fate, leading Minnesota 16 to nothing. Hi there, folks. I'm Tim McCarver, thanking you for watching my show exclusively here on NASN. Europe's leading channel for North American sports. Join me each week as I conduct in-depth interviews with the biggest stars from the world of sports. Whether you enjoy football, baseball, basketball, hockey, you name it. Check out NASN.com for the latest schedules and guest lists, and we'll see you right here on Chevrolet's Tim McCarver Show on NASN. Is this the year the cup comes to Buffalo? To Carolina? To Pittsburgh? Is this the year someone scores 50 and 38? In 37? In 36? Is this the year someone scores 200 points? Is this the year kids start taping their sticks like stall? Is this the year someone scores 93? Is this the year a forward becomes unstoppable? Is this the year a goalie stops everything? Is this the year we finally figure out who's dad's favorite? Is this the year? Is this the year? Method go up. Is this the year? Is this the year? How to Europe? I'm Tony Kornheiser, and I've got money in Swiss bank accounts. I hope it's not my money. I'm Mike Wilbon, inviting you to watch Pardon the Interruption right here on NASN, 
Europe's leading channel for North American sports. Each program, my good buddy Mike and I, my good buddy, that's Ooh, ridiculous. That's we discuss the latest sports news in our own very special way in foreign languages. Very special. That's right. We are full of opinions, and we hope to educate the European masses about American sports. Class starts every weekday, boys and girls, right here on NASM. Santana Moss, he's had groin problems, hamstring, heel, the whole thing. All well, lower body, he's missed a couple of games this year, and thus he's not had his best season. Only a second touchdown reception there, but he looked a thousand percent healthy. Adjusted, made the catch against McCauley, and it's 16 to nothing. The Sweezen's kick is dropped in the end zone, and this ball is live because it comes out of the end zone. And Andre Allison, who fumbled on a return earlier, He's able to pick it up and maintain possession, but it costs him a few yards as he will be spotted at the 13 to begin the next drive. You know, the Redskins just came in here fired up and they've been taking it to the Minnesota Vikings. And the, the Vikings kind of have to calm down here a little, you know, and and not think, okay, you know, we're down 16 to nothing. Think we we have to get a first down here. Then we have to get another first down. Then we have to get that first score. You know, just kind of start to get this game back under control. Because right now the Redskins really have control of it. Minnesota's run 15 plays for 48 yards. That is only three yards per play. And they can't get Peterson on track, and that's Reed Dowdy making the stop. So, you know, just when you think somebody is Superman, he gains 296 yards against one team. Oh, my God, this is the greatest I've ever seen, the best of all time. It's funny how defenses are able to adjust. And maybe he will be Superman throughout his career, but there will be nights like this as well. Well, they're just going to take him away, and you know it's because they can't throw the ball. I mean, they're just they're just daring him to throw. I mean, they just have they're just playing with three defensive backs, and they got a long yardage, and they'll drop off a little. But they're just packing that line of scrimmage until you're not going to run, and we're daring you to throw it. You saw the safety Reed Dowdy come out. Vernon Fox takes his spot. Jackson is under pressure, but gets it away in Shanko. Who fumbled after his last reception makes this catch up at the 16-yard line. You know, and that's that's the thing that you know they can do is 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 just say, okay, you have a good offensive line, you have a a good running game, but we can take that away by putting eight and nine men up in the line of scrimmage. Now the only way you're going to get us out of that defensively is throw us out of it. And the Redskins go to their neck on the third down and six. And Jackson's pass is caught, and that will move the chains as he hits Troy Williamson, their number one draft choice out of South Carolina. Three years ago, Lee Torrance making the tackle on the play. You know, and this is the this is a thing that Tavares Jackson has to do. I think I think as he gets as he gets a few completions here, you know, as he gets something going. Then he's going to get a little confidence. He'll get confidence in his receivers, he'll get confidence in his pass protection, and then maybe he can get something rolling. So the 24 yard line on the first down. Has time, sends it deep, but two Redskins are there, and only one Viking, and the pass is incomplete. And 10 to 10. Every BCS game live and exclusive on NASN. The Rose Bowl. The Sugar Bowl. The Fiesta Bowl. The Orange Bowl. And the BCS National Championship game live from New Orleans. The Bowl Championship Series live this January on NASN. What do I control? I don't control the bumps and the bruises, the crowd, or who covers me. I don't control the bounces, the shootout order. But for that matter, what happens outside the rink? There are a lot of things in life I don't control. But then again, there are some things that I do.
In 2005, a record crowd of over 103,000 packed Mexico City's Estadio Azteca to witness the NFL's first regular season game outside the United States. Tiene lo monte, Macau, alcanza a lanzar, pase completo a la dos, Left defensive end, and I mean the right defensive end, they brought him over here on the left side to go against Ryan Cook. And you say, where's the, where's the weakness in the Vikings offensive line? It's their right tackle, Ryan Cook. Chris Cooley with a good kick, fielded by Randall L at the 15 yard line, and then he gets surrounded by purple shirts and brings it back to the 20 yard line. So Cooley's punt, 53 yards, 7 yard run back. Ford is coming back out with the 